Okay, in this session we're going to look at improving on our desktop publishing skills. As you can tell from our other tutorials, we've actually made a banner using some text and some gradient effects. We've also got the ability to extract some photos and make them more interesting just putting in a solid frame. So let's get underway and see what new skills we can develop. First of all, you're going to need the assets folders. In the asset folder, you actually photo find photos from the Grampians. Also, you'll actually find in the asset folders the Word document that the text comes from. So first of all, we're going to start by using the stock photos. In here, you need to sort of select out, well, what's going to be my base image? What is going to be my background? So as you go through the different photos, you can pick all different ones. But I'm going to pick the very first one and say, well, this is going to be my background image. So first of all, I want to open this in Photoshop as my base application. Now, while this is opening, you've got to remember that you need to keep all your photos in the original state. So don't go editing an original. If you do, you need to sort of make a copy of that or a duplicate. Otherwise, you can cause an issue later. Now, with our layout at the moment, we will have a problem with the screen resolution and size. So I'll just slide that out a little bit just so you can see what is happening. Now this is our based image and as you can tell um, it has a lock on it and I'm just going to double click it and remove the lock straight away so that the image is editable. Now because this is a base image I want to bring some other images in. Now using Photoshop we can actually just click and drag some in. So if I wanted to I could say Okay, I would like this image in. Just click and drag that file up and in. Oh, it's not going to let me, so we'll do it a different way. We'll open this in Photoshop as well. And now I can grab this layer, or if I wanted to, I can um, work or arrange, I can cascade. I can just grab this layer and drop it in on the other one. Now you can see that it's on the left hand side at the moment, and I can shift this around. I can slide it to wherever I like. At the moment, it's probably a little bit large, so I can shrink this down. And I can position this into a spot. Now, if I wanted to, I can use it as a strong border with the tree against the side. And I can also change the opacity of the actual layer itself. So I can actually reduce this and therefore make the image blend in a little bit more. And by pressing Enter, you can start seeing that the image is taking on a form. Now I would like some more detail and a bit more interesting stuff in there as well. So I'm going to head back to my stock photos. I'm probably going to use something maybe like the waterfall. And I'll open this one in Photoshop as well. And then once again, same thing, just drop that in so it becomes a layer. And then because the layer is so strong, I'm going to actually reduce its opacity. And keep bringing that down and that can actually sit over the top if I want. Now, if I'm not happy with a layer maybe such as this one, I can always change its order. I can also change its size if I wish. Or if I wanted to, I can actually delete it out. But I'm going to keep it, and I'm just going to put it down in the bottom corner here. Stretch it back up again. I just want that green growth sort of just poking through. If I want to change its um, opacity once more, I can do that to blend it right into the background. Now we can also feather the edge if we wanted to. We could actually use the lasso tool, cut out the edge like this, and when we go up to um, select, we can actually come down and go refine edge. And in the refining edge, we can actually um, change the radius. And once we go OK, we can then push the delete key. We can cut it out with Command X. And now that sharp edge we had before is gone, which makes it blend in a lot nicer. So I'm pretty happy with that so far. Press Enter to take the selection. So I'm going to actually now flatten the image and merge or flatten image together and now that's my single image. Once that's done we can actually add some text to this. I can grab the text tool and I can come up and place text on the screen. 
might need to reduce it at the minimum at 60 points. I might come back down to a 30. And in here I can actually um, make a title. So depending on what you want, input the Grampians. But we need to sort of move that so I can actually select it and slide it back in. If it's still too big I can just use the handles to adjust this and that will actually change my um, font size and everything for me. And I can move that into a sort of position. I can sort of make it long if I wanted to or short. And once it's there, if I'm not ha too happy with the color, I can always grab the text tool once more and go apply, sorry. Text tool, select the text, and then I can actually pick a different color. So if I want something like blue, I can make it stand out with blue or if I want it to be really highlighted I might actually select something like a orangey sort of colour and that will stand out against the background. Now the text layer itself, if I double click next to the name I can actually open up a blend option and in here I can actually add different things like a drop shadow. With the drop shadow I can actually um, play with the blend modes if you wanted to and also I like to use things like outer glow which is useful because I can actually change the spread I can actually change the size and also if I wanted to I can actually change the way it transitions at the moment it's a yellow sort of color you can have inner glows as well and once again you can change the choke of it and there's a few other little things you can alter as you go along but it makes the text stand out against the background now I would like this to become part of a title of my assignment so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten the image once more and I'm going to merge or flatten the image I'm going to create a letterbox so I'm going to actually use my selection tool come in and basically cut a nice little square out or a mailbox and then I'm going to go into file and new and because it know I'm using the information from the clipboard it's already got my pixels and height and a transparent background so I'm going to click on OK then I'm going to paste that in there and this is going to be my title now I'm quite happy with that so I'm going to go to file and I'm going to save for web devices and I'm going to save it to my desktop and I've got a choice of different images I can use but I like to use a PNG file and it's going to be on a transparency. And I'm going to click save and save to my desktop as Grampian's title and save. Okay, so let's head into Word and we'll place that in our document to start with. So here I'm in Word and I'm actually going to go um, insert picture from file and then it's going to ask me well whereabouts do I want to get it from and you notice before I actually saved it on my desktop so if I go to my thing and desktop in here I should actually have the Grampians title and I can go insert so this is going to become the title of my document I also said there was some source information as well so what we're going to do is go file and we're going to open and I'm going to go to my desktop and into the bolds peak and there is the students one, or the Bolds Peak student. I'm going to open this up. Okay, it's just said it's not a valid one, so we'll just go in and select it this way. Okay, here's the document. So I'm just going to copy this one out. So just Command C, go back to my other Word document, sorry. Window, document one, and press enter key and go command V. Now, whenever I'm word processing, I actually turn on the show all command. This allows you to see all your different formatting, where you press enter, where all the spacing is, etc. So I find that very, very useful. So this is going to form my title, and I can actually see what's happening in my Word document, plus all the different names and grammar and spelling, etc. Okay, now some other things I want to place in here I would like a couple of more images so once again I'm just going to head back into my stock photos and I'm going to go through and have a look at some of the images 
okay um, as I go through my images I might actually say okay I like this flower but I don't want all the rock behind it so we can actually extract this once more so we'll open this in Photoshop now we're going to use our lasso and there's some different lassos you've got polygon and you've got magnetic lasso we're going to use the free lasso here because this will allow us to draw a shape around it so I'm just going to draw an arbitrary sort of arc around it you can actually put patterns to these if you wish and just join that up and you see that it's made a selection and under the select once again I'm going to go to refine edge now this will actually show you what it looks like when it's extracted so if this is what I would like I can go with that I can change the radius I can also smooth it out more or I can feather the edge a little further and make it more of a blend coming in and actually I'm pretty happy with that blend right there now so I'm just going to click OK I'm going to once again cut that out with the Command X and Photoshop New once again it's coming from the clipboard and therefore adjusted my map it's still on transparent and I'm going to paste it now what I'm going to do is go File Save for Web Devices I'm going to use a PNG once more. I'm going to save it to my desktop and I'm going to call it Flower 1. Now you notice that I'm doing all my image preparation and placing them in the documents before I start doing my text manipulation. So I'm going to just put the flower over on this side. And just go Insert Picture from File and then find Flower 1 and go Insert. At the moment it's really large so I've just selected it just resize that down and we can worry about the formatting around that a little bit later now I just want one more image I think I just need something down in the bottom right hand corner so once again I'll head back to my stock images and I would like to use the Aboriginal art this one here so once again open my Photoshop and I find that the lasso tool is the easiest way so I go around select it Now, you need to go back and select and also um, when you go back in and refine the edge because you really need to see what you're going to get. So in this case here, I want to make the radius just that little bit smaller. I want to reduce the feathering just a little bit because otherwise it blurs out too much of the artwork. And Click on OK. Happy with that. Cut it out once more. File New and then I can paste that in. Now once more I can save this by going to save for web devices. Happy with that. And I'll just call that art. Now once this is finished I'm actually going to be pretty well done with Photoshop. Now in the bottom right hand corner insert picture from file and now I can go through and find art click insert once again I can reduce this down now because everything is now on my page I can then go through and start typesetting so this is where we can actually leave Photoshop and we can close everything down so we don't need to save anything so we can just close so we're going to close this down so we'll just quickly go through and don't save anything or we'll just go to Photoshop quick Photoshop and we go don't save okay now we're back into Word. Now at the moment I've got this title and if I wanted to I can actually put some information next to it. So if I want the bold peaks to sit up next to it I need to sort of adjust my image. So if I double if I double click it I can actually go into layout I can actually say well I want a square or I can have a tight square I can have other right centered I always use other and click OK because then you notice the information's got up and wrapped and if I want to move the the title up and back into my margin area I can do that but you've got to remember there is a header part and there is a side margin so you don't go, want to go right out to the edge because the actual printer itself will cut it because the printers can't print to the actual edge of a page or to the very top or the very bottom so there's a gutter that runs a top and bottom and also a very thin margin now once I'm here you notice there's two enter keys here so I can actually delete those and have my title right here I can highlight this and then using my palette I can actually go over and change the size and maybe go to 16 
and if I want to change the color etc I can also go through and make a color change now by pressing enter I can move the text down and below and what we might also do at the moment is we might actually zoom in a little bit to make it easier to see so we've gone into 150 percent just make this a little wider or actually we might even go to page width and we can work on our document a little better well, we better head back because for some unknown reason I've just lost all my diagram okay oh there we go okay now I've got the right document I've closed the other one down make this a little wider and I'm going to go out to page width that's the general one I would normally work in and I'll take this out as wide as I need it to go so that I can see now this formatting palette is important so you're able to actually change what is happening so we've got our text set and at the moment it is using Arial 7.5 now we know that 7.5 is a little bit hard to read so I'm just going to select all my text and the first thing I'm going to do, Arial has a very nice 9 point font or 10 so I'm going to set it to 9 and that will give you a nice sharp looking text the other thing that I do with all my Word documents, if I triple click with the mouse or 1, 2, 3, you can select the whole document with a triple click you can actually go to alignment and spacing and block justify your whole document it gives you nice sharp edges it makes your work look better at the end it may not work for your title but you can sort of work around that as well so you can actually increase the little sizes but you can play with the title and get it to a point where you're happy I'm going to just leave it as a 14 at the moment now after the first paragraph I've got um, space to escape I'm going to try to accent this by moving it by adjusting the margin and putting it back out on the edge and increase its size to say 14 and also give it an interesting font so I normally try to pick a font that stands out a little bit that makes it just a little bit more interesting to look at and then give it a dominant color on the page so something so it stands out so I'm going to pick a dark teal once again I'm just working down the document looking at where everything is and where there's a return I'll just put a return space in now this image here I'm going to double click once more I'm going to put tight and other and then I can actually move this once again out to the edge and you notice with the tight it's bending around that curve that I had before which makes it more interesting than just a sharp edge like on the bottom here and once we go through this document and put the spaces in there's not much more we need to do except for once again same with this one here we can actually make it tight this time I'm going to place this on the right hand side we can also make these stand out a little bit more by changing their colors now if I'm happy with the way it looks I can actually use the brush tool which picks up those properties and I'll just highlight what I want to go red alright and the only thing you need to do okay so this taste needs to go down onto the next page it didn't quite fit now because it's the same I'm just gonna grab this and highlight this title and you notice it's picked all that up for me and the last thing we need to do is go to view um, and head a footer head down to the footer of the document and you just need to enter in your name and you need to place like um, IT and the class and then on the right you can put the page number there if you wanted to and you can use page and up here you can actually put the number click on close and that now makes the assignment look a whole lot better than what it did before